Hey, where are you? It's our first family trip in a while, so I thought I would enjoy it with just my family. After all, we will go home after finishing our sightseeing. Maybe you can run home. I'm not sure how many days that will take. My mother-in-law laughed as she made fun of me. You like this bad town, right? Enjoy it on your own today. There's laundry to do, and her son will come back from his training camp at some point today. So get home tonight and finish that. My husband happily ordered me around. I couldn't hold myself back anymore. You should do your laundry yourself. What? Hey, hey! What's with your attitude? I'm the breadwinner of the family. Time have changed. That's not how things work anymore. What? You really are rude today. I will teach you a lesson when I get home tonight. So be prepared. Huh? You can just forget what I've said. I'm never going to see you again, anyway. Huh? My husband and Indos all exclaimed in surprise. My name is Ava. I'm a 42-year-old office worker. My husband James is two years older than me. We met at work, where he was my senior. He was good at his job, and I respected him, so we got married. We had our son Lucas shortly after getting married, and we were happy. But our relationship fell apart in no time. If I were to say that the reason our relationship fell apart was my husband's parents, that wouldn't be an exaggeration. Especially his mother. She never liked me, and she's always harassed me. My husband used to protect me. And we lived far away from them, so I could handle it because I didn't have to meet my in-laws often. But around the time that our son started high school, James was transferred to a different office. The office James was transferred to was in his hometown, where his parents still lived. Both James's workplace and the high school our son entered were near my in-laws' house. So we suddenly ended up living very close to them. In order to accommodate my family, I decided to quit my job and find a new workplace in James's hometown. I found a job at a much nicer company than the office than the one I was working at before. I didn't have to work overtime, and I could go home relatively early. Because of that, I had more time to cook dinner. And prepare lunch boxes for my husband and son, but that also meant I have to interact with my mother-in-law more, because she knew I would be home early and would come and visit. She would come over specifically to bully me, so life got very stressful. Around that time, my in-laws planned a trip to a spa resort town, and invited me to join. They said they wanted James, Lucas, and I to come. I asked Lucas if he was interested. I have, I have training camp for my team, so I can't. Is what he replied. He's been playing baseball since he was in the middle school, and the high school he's at now has a pretty strong team that even does training camps during school breaks. Oh, really? I guess there is nothing we can do about it then, huh? Are you really going to go? I like spas after all. Will you be okay? Lucas knew very well how his grandma treated me. He also knew that his dad had been rough with me recently as well. It seemed that he worried that something bad would happen to me. It should be okay. If something happens, I'll deal with it then. Lucas seemed to understand. The day passed, and before I knew it, it was time for the trip. About tomorrow, after you got the rental car, go and pick up mom and dad. James spoke to me without peeling his eyes away from the TV. What will you be doing? 
when I go to pick up the rental car. I'm exhausted from work, so I'll sleep in until right before we leave. You can come pick me up after you pick up my parents, right? Our home is in the direction of the resort, anyway. Recently, my husband is always like this. He forces me to do anything, which he finds annoying. I was also at work all day, and I do all the housework. I'm the one who made his lunch, and the dinner he ate just now. No matter how you look at it, I am more tired than he is. But James just thinks about himself. When we first got married, we would split the housework evenly. Even when our son was young, he would help me out a lot. As Lucas got older, James was entrusted with more responsibilities at work, so he began doing less housework. But he would still help out with cleaning or cooking on the weekends. But since we moved here, and his mother began visiting more often, he completely stopped helping around the house. It must be because my mother-in-law would talk against me for letting him do housework. Why is James doing housework? That's the wife's job, isn't it? it? Is what she would always say. He's the breadwinner, so he should just focus on work. She would say that every time she came over, and little by little, she brainwashed James into not helping out around the house. And that's true. There's no need for me to do housework. I wonder why you've made me do it until now. He would even blame me about the fact he's helped out around the house so far. It was out of my control, and I couldn't think of any way to fix it. In a span of a few years, James drastically changed. He started having trouble at work, and began lashing out at me regularly. Even if I tried to speak to him logically, he wouldn't listen. It became annoying for me. So at some point, I just stopped trying. That was the least stressful way for me to live. I considered getting a divorce, but since Lucas was going to a private high school, his tuition was expensive. And when he starts a university, things will only get more expensive. I decided it would be too much for me to handle as a single parent. I decided I would just ignore James as much as possible, and go along with him since he gave us money. Thinking like that has made me think less stressful, and so I haven't felt desperate enough to get a divorce yet. The spa town we will be traveling to was one of my favorites. And I thought I could have a lot of fun on my own, while my husband and in-laws do their own thing. They probably just thought of me as a driver. But worst comes to worst, to my husband or father-in-law could also drive sometimes. Anyways, I listened to my husband's instructions, and the next day I collected the rental car and then headed to my in-laws. Eva. Aren't you late? What the? This is a car we're using. It would have been better if we had a larger car. Well, I guess it's better than your car at least. The car I usually drive is a compact car I bought myself, since I use it to commute every day, and I'm the only one who really uses the car. I paid for it myself for commuting. A compact car suits me perfectly, and I like the interior and the color of the car. My husband uses my car and drives his parents around in it without asking me. So his parents complain to me about my car and look down on me because they think all I can afford is a small car. That's why we decided to go out of our way and rent a car for our trip. Honestly. I thought we could just use my father-in-law's car. If we did that, they would have directly come to pick us up, and I wouldn't need to drive back and forth like this. 
but my father-in-law said that he doesn't like driving long distances, and even more importantly, that he hates other people driving his car. For the selfish reason, he made us rent a car and drive him. My husband and I were supposed to share the driving, but he slept the entire ride, forcing me to drive the whole time. The entire time, my husband was sleeping. My father-in-law criticized my driving. He would tell me to take turns where I couldn't, and when I could, and I would, and I would have to stop at a red light. He would ask me why I didn't drive faster. It was very annoying. My mother-in-law, who didn't have a driver's license, would also join in in criticizing me. I didn't want to be told anything from my mother-in-law who couldn't drive. And at the very least, I haven't gotten into five car accidents like my father-in-law. They should really take away his license before he gets into a more serious accident. Are you discriminating against me because of my age? None of the accidents so far have been my fault. Is what he would say whenever we suggest he stops driving. Because of that, I honestly didn't want him to drive me. But I really wished he would stop criticizing me for every little thing, and he was leaning forward from the back seat to complain. He was spitting everywhere, and it was pretty gross. My husband woke up as soon as we arrived. Oh, he was faster than I expected. Hearing my husband say that so casually, honestly made me angry. Since we drove the whole day. My in-laws wanted to relax once we reached the hotel, so we followed their orders and spent the rest of the day at the hotel. I wanted to wash my hair, so I quickly went to the hotel spa's mineral bath. After I strolled around the hotel on my own and enjoyed myself, we then ate dinner and all went back to our rooms. By the way, for this trip, I got a room with a single bed. While my husband and my in-laws stayed together in a three-person room, I had a lot of space for myself. So honestly, this was way nicer for me. I went to relax at the mineral bath again, and then I returned to my bedroom. I had bought beer and snacks from the hotel store, so spent my time watching TV and snacking. Around this time. Lucas must be with his teammates eating dinner together and having a fun time, or maybe he's in his training camp dorm room playing games. I didn't want to annoy him by texting or calling him. I'll tell him about the trip once we get home. I realized it was already midnight, so I tucked into bed and went to sleep. The next morning, I woke up and enjoyed the fresh air. How nice it would be if I could wake up this refreshed every morning. There were two hours until the time my in-laws said we should all gather for breakfast. It was still only 6:30 a.m. It seems I've gotten used to waking up this early to prepare lunch boxes for everyone. That's right. Since I'm here. I might as well take a relaxing morning bath. I went back to the hotel bathhouse and soaked into the hot water. The weather was nice, so the outdoor mineral bath felt amazing. I got back to my room and texted Lucas. I'm pretty sure he said he would be getting back home tonight, so he will probably be waiting for us alone until we get back. By the time I texted Lucas. Gathered my luggage and put on makeup. It was already around 8:30. I went to eat breakfast. I was supposed to eat breakfast with my in-laws and husband, so I headed to their room. But when I knocked on their door, there was no reply. Maybe they already went to the breakfast hall. I decided to head to the breakfast hall, but they weren't there either. 
breakfast area wasn't that big, so if they were there, I would have seen them easily. I sent James a text, but he didn't reply. Thinking it couldn't possibly be true, I spoke to the hotel receptionist and found out James and his parents had already eaten breakfast and left. They told me they were going to eat at 8:30. It seems the hotel breakfast began at 7:30, and my in-laws purposefully told me to get there at 8:30 so that they wouldn't have to eat with me. On top of that. They left me to check out and pay for them, telling me that they would pay for the trip was a lie. I had to pay for both of our rooms. Of course, the car was gone. They wanted to leave me behind and go home on their own. At first, I was really angry, but then I realized there was no point. If that's how they feel, fine. Relaxed. I went back to the breakfast area to eat. I rested in the hotel right until it was checkout time. Now then, what should I do next? As I was thinking this, my mother-in-law called me. Hey, where are you? When I said that, my mother-in-law laughed loudly. It's our first family trip in a while, so I thought. I wanted to enjoy it with just my family. After all, then why did you invite me in the first place? We brought you to drive us, and to pay for the hotel. We brought you to a resort town you like, and you ate delicious food. So you should be grateful to us. If I had come with Lucas, it would have been much cheaper. Why do I need to pay for the three of them? To hold back my anger, I let out a sigh. We will go home after finishing our sightseeing. Maybe you can run home. I'm not sure how many days that would take. My mother-in-law laughed as she made fun of me. I didn't want to leave things like this. Is James driving now? Please put the call on speakerphone so that he can hear me. Following my request. I could hear James' voice. What happened? Why do you want to talk? Were you planning to leave me like this from the beginning? Don't get that mad. You like this bad town, right? Enjoy it on your own today. There's laundry to do, and our son will come back from his training camp at some point. So, get home tonight to finish that. My husband happily ordered me around. I couldn't hold myself back anymore. You should do your own laundry yourself. Hey, hey! What's with your attitude? I'm the breadwinner of this family. The head of the family is telling you to relax, and then come home. You should be crying out of happiness and gratitude right now. Times have changed. That's not how things work anymore. What? You really are rude today. I will teach you a lesson when I get home tonight, so be prepared. Um, you can just forget what I've said. I am never going to see you again. Anyway, huh? My husband and in-laws all exclaimed in surprise. I didn't see you today. So dinner last night was the last time. What? What do you mean? My husband's voice was trembling. Well, I'll be divorcing you. You handed me divorce papers a year ago, right? You've changed since we moved. Around this time last year, you treated me especially coldly. One day you were so angry, you suddenly gave me divorce papers. At the time, I was worried about how I could afford Lucas' tuition, so I refused. Shortly after that moment, you apologized to me, and said we shouldn't divorce. Though we carried on with our married life, I stopped trusting you, so I hired a private investigator. 
and I found out you were having an affair with an old classmate. It seems you met up again after we moved to your hometown. So she is a single mother with a daughter in middle school. At the time, you probably considered breaking up with me and marrying her, but she turned down the idea of getting married again. Then, you realized that if we divorced, then you would have been alone, and you would have been stuck paying childcare, so it wouldn't have been beneficial for you. Anyway, you make me do all the housework, so life with me is easier than being alone. Basically, from that point on, you considered me your servant. But that's fine. I just stayed with you for your money anyway. I hid away the proof I had from the private investigator to use in case something happened. The affair of yours might be over now, but since less than a year has passed since I found out, I can still use it against you. As I spoke, I could hear how shocked my in-laws were. They didn't seem to know about James's affair. I added one more thing, and surprised my in-laws even more. I know you've been demoted, and don't have a high of a salary anymore, but I don't care. I won't have mercy when it comes to the alimony you owe me. My in-laws once again exclaimed in surprise. Good of you to act so important when you and I are make the same salary. I earn the same money as you, but I also make lunch for you and Lucas, and cook everyone dinner. You were demoted, and only do easy work at the office. So don't you find it embarrassing to always act tired, and call yourself the family breadwinner? He was silent as I kept rubbing salt into his wound. The only reason I stayed married to you was Lucas' tuition, but I found out. But as a single mother, I can get support from his school. My parents will help me too, so I don't need you. You'll be paying me alimony and child support anyway. Even if I have less money. I'd rather live a stress-free and happy life without you. I'll be submitting the divorce papers, so enjoy your trip with your parents. My in-laws yelled out my name in a panic. It seemed like James wanted to say something, but I hung up the phone. I got onto the local bus and rode to the train station. From there, I took the express train home. Feeling refreshed from having told James everything I wanted to say, I ate lunch and had a beer in the train. The timing of the bus and train was good, so I made it home before evening. I found the divorce forms and submitted to the city hall. I'm glad James had already signed them a year ago. As I was packing my things, Lucas returned home. Oh. You're back early. Why are you alone? I needed to tell you what happened. I needed to tell you what happened. If you are getting a divorce, I'm coming with you. Lucas didn't seem very upset or shocked. Well, he's already a high school sophomore. He must have understand that his father and I were having issues. Let me pack my stuff too. He went to his room to pack. I had called my parents while I was in the train, so they came with their car, and Lucas loaded all of her stuff. Being in the baseball team really had made him strong and dependable. He was so different from his father. When we moved here, James was incredibly lame, and complained about how heavy things was the entire time. We finished packing our things into the car. And headed to my parents' house. James and his parents had called countless times, so I finally called back when we made it to my parents' house. Finally, hey, why didn't you pick up the phone until now? I'm the one who decides when I pick up the phone. Shut up! I won't divorce you. No matter what you say, we're strangers now. 
Huh? You already signed the divorce papers a year ago, and I submitted them. No way. I'll be claiming alimony and child support from you. If you want to discuss that, please talk to my lawyer. Wait, Ava, think this over. It's true that I betrayed you once, because you are the only woman in my life now. I will take care of you again. Hearing what James said was so gross, I felt like throwing up what I had eaten for lunch. How stupid are you? What? I have no love left for you anymore. Why don't you try hooking up with your ex-lover again? It seems like she's remarried, though, so I don't think you have much luck, huh? James seemed shocked. It seems that if he couldn't remarry me, he planned to going back to his ex-lover. Why men are so simple-minded? I found out she had remarried when I contacted her about receiving compensation from her. James's ex-lover had told me she was fine with paying alimony. She just wanted me to keep things secret so that she could live peacefully with her new husband. She seemed very sorry for what she had done, so I let her get away with just paying the compensation. Anyway, I would need it for Lucas' tuition. I received alimony and compensation from James. It seemed that he couldn't pay it with his salary and savings alone, so he had to ask his parents for help. My ex-in-laws were incredibly shocked. Their son would do something like this. They're just as dumb as him, but they also deserve to be punished. So this is good. After everything was resolved, I rented an apartment for Lucas and I to live in. Even after we began living just the two of us. Lucas continued to grow into a fine young man. Today, my parents and I went to watch one of his baseball games. Seeing him standing at home plate, ready to bat, he looked so grown up. A sharp metallic noise rang across the baseball field as he hit the ball, and he and his teammates zoomed across the bases. As I thought to myself about how happy I am to be watching Lucas grow like this, I clapped and cheered him on.